welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. In today's video, we are going to use wire terminal and TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers to create an intelligent meteor station able to predict the weather and precipitation for next 24 hours based on local data from VME280 environmental sensor. I will tell you how to apply model optimization techniques that will allow you not only run medium-sized convolutional neural network on Cortex M4F device, but also to have this sleeky GUI and Wi-Fi connection all running at the same time for days and months at the time. This is the end result. You can see there are current temperature, humidity and atmospheric pressure values displayed on the screen together with the city name, predicted weather type and predicted precipitation chance. And in the bottom of the screen, there is a log output field, which you can easily repurpose for displaying extreme weather information, AI jokes or tweets from my Twitter. While it looks good and useful as it is, there are a lot of things you can add yourself. For example, above mentioned news, tweets output on the screen or using deep sleep mode to conserve the energy and make it battery powered and so on. This project expands on an article about weather prediction from my colleague Jonathan Tan. Most notably, we will improve a few things from basic implementation in that article. First, we're going to use BME280 sensor, which will allow us to get the atmospheric pressure information together with temperature and humidity. Second, the neural network model in the original project is trained to predict weather for next half an hour based on data points from previous three hours, one measurement every half an hour. So, essentially, it is more of a weather descriptor than a weather predictor. We will utilize more advanced data processing and model architecture to predict weather type and precipitation chance for next 24 hours based on previous 24 hour measurements. We will also utilize model optimizations, which will allow us to get smaller model and feed more things in wire terminal memory. For example, web server and a pretty LVGL interface with dark light material themes. So where shall we begin? It all starts with data, of course. For this tutorial, we will use a readily available data set from Kaggle. Link in the video description. I live in Shenzhen, a city in southern China, and that city is absent from the data set. So I picked a city that is located on a similar longitude and also has subtropical climate, Miami. You'll need to pick a city that at least resembles the climate of the place where you live. It goes without saying that training model on data from Miami to be used in Chicago, for example, is not going to work at all. For data processing and model training step, let's open Colab notebook I prepared and shared in GitHub repository for this project. Since every cell has comment about it in the video, I'll just explain the general idea behind workflow and for details, you can execute the code yourself. So in the, in the notebook, we're going to start by downloading the data from Kaggle. Uh, we're going to use the historical hourly weather data 2012-2017. Um, this data set has the weather data, hourly weather data for 30 US and Canadian cities and six Israeli cities. So you're going to create your uh, Kaggle API token and place it for convenience to your Google Drive uh, Kaggle folder. And after that, you can just simply download the data set like that with a one line comment. Um, then after the data set downloaded, uh, since it has some missing data, uh, we're going to use pandas interpolate function here to impaint the missing values. Then we're going to reorganize our data slightly. Uh, basically, uh, since we want to predict the weather for next 24 hours based on the previous 24 hours, um, 
we going to uh, we're going to calculate the dominant weather so for for our input for x values uh, which is going to use 24 uh, data readings from sensor each reading has three components which is uh, temperature humidity and air pressure and then for our y or the thing we want to predict we are going to use the type and precipitation for the type it's going to be the dominant type for the 24 hours the most occurring value within 24 hour window so let's say we have 20 cloudy hours one rainy and three foggy so it makes sense to say that that 24 hour period was cloudy and then for precipitation value we are going to calculate it by dividing the number of rainy hours within your time window period by time window lengths. So for example, two rainy hours within 24 hour period will give us 8.3% precipitation. Um, then, because our data set has, data set has heavy inbounds towards uh, cloudy weather, we are going to apply uh, random oversampling, which will help us with the imbalance. Uh, we also going to apply normalization to data here. Uh, temperature is going to be divided by 60 because I found that it is the maximum, the, the highest temperature that was ever recorded on Earth. Uh, then we're going to obviously divide humidity by 100, which will give us, uh, which because humidity is a percentage. And we're going to divide the air pressure by 1000. So in end, we're going to get values for air pressure close to 1. And then we're going to start the training. Um, so we're going to test four different architectures uh, for 200 epochs with reduced learning rate on plateau and model checkpoint callbacks. Uh, the first architecture is going to be a regular convolutional 1D with average pulling. Then the next one is go we're going to see if we can get away with using less parameters by applying separable convolution 1D. Uh, and then uh, we also going to check oh here's the second model several convolutional separable convolutions 1d and average pulling this model has less parameters than the others uh, for the third model we're going to use separable convolutions 1d but we're going to take away the average pulling and to keep the model size approximately roughly the same we're going to apply dilation to the first three layers and then finally we're going to test a uh, simple fully connected network with 128 uh, neurons in the first hidden layer and then 32 neurons in the second hidden layer um, with dropout in the middle. So after I compared, after I trained these models for 200 epochs, I've noticed that um, the first model and third model, which is plain convolutional 1D with average pulling, and separable convolutional 1D with dilation actually perform almost similarly, achieving about 75% accuracy for type and 0.04 mean squared error loss for precipitation. So as you see, uh, we use uh, softmax activation for uh, type because it's a simple classification problem and we formulate our uh, precipitation uh, as a uh, regression problem. So we have the uh, sigmoid activation, which will squash our values from zero to one. Because uh, what we aim to get with precipitation is the uh, percent of precipitation within the time window. So that could be a number between uh, a zero and one. And then we also find out that the separable convolution 1D with average pooling and fully connected networks, they did not perform that well. I had uh, about 55% accuracy, which is, uh, which is not suitable at all for using. And then after the model is trained, uh, we actually uh, we compare their performance using confusion matrix and inference on random samples from validation data set. Uh, and then we manually, according to our testing result, choose the model that we would like to convert. We use TensorFlow Lite to convert the model from Keras file, uh, the, to convert the Keras model to TF Lite plat buffer and make sure that you have the inference type TF integer 8, input and output type integer 8 
and, uh, and supported ops as TF Lite built in integer 8 set. Uh, this is because we are quanti quantizing our model, converting it from float 32 to integer 8, which will greatly reduce uh, its uh, size and will increase our inference speed. Then, of course, it's a good idea after conversion to check if uh, the converted model after quant quantization process performs uh, the same or at least very similar to the original model. Um, it is normal to actually have uh, certain accuracy loss after quantization, uh, but it shouldn't be more than 1-2%. It should be within that 1-2% uh, range. And then when you, when you check the model, check the TensorFlow Lite model, uh, that it behaves properly, then you finally can write the content of TF Lite file as a byte array to .h file, which you will later compile with the sketch in Arduino IDE. Once you get the train model, it is time to deploy it to the wire terminal. As mentioned before, we're going to use TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, which I will call TensorFlow Micra since TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers is quite mouseful. TensorFlow Micra is relatively young framework, so we'll have to jump through quite a few hoops to deploy our model to wire terminal. It got much better, however, since the time when it was unveiled. Just look at this video of Pete Warden, TensorFlow, Maintain TensorFlow Micra maintainer, doing the first live demo on stage and being quite nervous a few years ago. So, the first step. If you are making this project on Windows, the first thing you will need to do is to download the nightly version of Arduino IDE. Um, you will need to download uh, the hourly builds, this particular one, the latest one at the moment. Um, this only applies to Windows, not Linux or Mac, uh, because uh, there is an issue that linker command during compilation exceed maximum command lengths on window, Windows. So on Windows, because we have a lot of libraries uh, in our final sketch, it's, uh, it will compile, but you will get an error during linking step. If you use latest stable build, so you will need to use the hourly build, where this problem was solved already. Then you need to replace the content of uh, C of cmsisgcc.h file with newer version in order to avoid, uh, avoid a variable here not being defined. You will find the newer version of the file in GitHub repository for this project. I will place it there for you. Um, so you will need to download it or just place on raw and then do select all. Um, and then you'll find, you'll, you'll find that cmsisgcc.h file here uh, in users, your username, app data, local, Arduino 15 packages, Siduino tools, cmsys 5.40, cmsis core includes, uh, actually look in the article, I, I, have, I have put the full pass in the article because it's a long pass, so you can open it with notepad++. I already replaced the content of this file myself with a newer version, but you will need to do that uh, first. So actually, if you have Notepad++, you will just be able to do select all, delete, and place the content from, the, from, from, from this project GitHub repository. And finally, since we're using convolutional neural network and build it with Keras API, it contains an operation not supported by current stable version of TensorFlow Micro. Um, the operation in question is expandings and it is used heavily uh, by Keras uh, for convolutional and also pooling layers. Um, and uh, so it is not available in current stable build of TensorFlow Micro. But if you go to TensorFlow GitHub repository, you will see that there is a pull request ongoing uh, that adds this operation, expand dims, uh, to the available operations for TensorFlow Micra. Unfortunately, it is not yet merged, um, so there are two ways for you to do it. 
the first way, the first way is you can git clone TensorFlow Lite uh, TensorFlow repository, switch to this pull request branch, which is issue 4628225PR4. And then uh, you can compile the Arduino library by executing the commands uh, TensorFlow Lite Micro Tools CL build test Arduino.sh. You'll need to do it on Linux computer because it's uh, it's it's a bash script. Then you'll be able to find the compiled Arduino library that already has the support for expand Dings operation. Alternatively, you can download already compiled library, which I conveniently placed for you in GitHub repository for this project. Just make sure that you only have one TensorFlow Lite, uh, TensorFlow Lite library uh, in your Arduino sketches libraries folder at the time. Do not have more than one or you'll have conflicts. Once this is all done, you can create an empty sketch and call it something uh, YRTF Micro Weather Test um, and then save it. Then you want to place the model that you trained and uh, saved, that you trained in Google Colab. Uh, uh, you want to place that uh, model.h file in the same in the same folder where your sketch is located. Uh, then I, I suggest you change uh, this uh, the model name and then uh, the model links variables to something shorter. I actually changed it to convolutional 1D TF light and convolutional 1D TF light len, but name can be anything as long as it's the same as in your main code where you will declare and load the model. Um, all right, and now let's go over the main steps we have based in, in the C++ code. So first of all, we're going to start with including all the headers for TensorFlow library and the file with uh, modal flat buffer. Next, oh, notice that I actually have uh, two resolvers here. I have micro mutable op resolver, which is commented out, and all ops resolver, which is not commented out. Um, all ops resol all ops resolver dot h header compiles all operations currently available in TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. So it is really convenient for testing, but once you finish testing and you know exactly what operations are in your model, it is advised to switch to micromutable op resolver because it saves a lot of space on the device. Just having the operations that you actually need. Just having the operations that you actually need. Next, we define the pointers for error reporter model input and output tensors uh, and also the interpreter. Notice that uh, here our model also has two outputs, which is the output for type and output for precipitation. Um, also, we define the tensor arena, which you can think about as a scratch board. It contains some intermediate tensors and input and output tensors. The size for it, I actually gave a lot. Uh, I gave about 25 kilobytes. Um, and uh, it really depends on the model you're using and its size. And you may need to determine that exact size by experimentation. Then in Arduino setup function, uh, there is more boilerplate stuff, such as instantiating the error reporter, op resolver, interpreter, then mapping our model uh, into usable data structure and then allocating the tensors. Then we check the uh, tensor, and uh, then we check the input and output shapes after tensor allocation to make sure that uh, the input and output shapes are match, uh, match the inputs and outputs of the models that we uh, trained and converted in Colab. Uh, on this allocate tensor step, you might get an error if some operations that you have in your model are not supported by TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. And in case you have these unsupported operations, you can either change the model architecture, which is the easier way, or you can add the support for the operator yourself, usually by porting them from TensorFlow Lite. And then finally, in the loop function, we define the placeholder for quantized values uh, for quantized integer 8 values 
and we also have an array with float values which we can copy paste from Colab notebook uh, for comparison for comparison of model inference in Colab notebook and on device uh, and here in this for loop we actually convert the float values uh, from float to integer 8 one by one and then we place them into models input tensor then we invoke the interpreter and if there are no errors reported we get the uh, uh, the the inference result placed into output tensors because our model is quantized and has integer 8 inputs and outputs uh, it means that uh, we will also need to do the uh, reverse operation and convert the integer 8 output from the model to float and then we just print them out on the serial monitor. So what you want to do is you want to copy these values for one time window from Colab notebook. There is, uh, you remember that there was a cell here towards the end where we were checking the TF light model and if the outputs of TF light model are the, are the same or at least similar to the outputs of float or not quantized model so you can get these values here as the output of this cell and then you can place them here just copy and paste um, okay and then after that if you actually upload this to Y terminal okay let's see I have connected it with USB cable and uh, I will just press on upload so it's going to compile first and upload it to Y terminal to see the result so again, this is just a test sketch. Uh, we are testing on the static values that the output of the model on the device, in fact, matches the output of the model in Collab Notebook. This is our first step. Okay, it's uploaded now. Let's open the serial monitor. Okay, and this is exactly what we see here. I actually placed just zero, all the zero values here. Um, so the output makes sense. Um, for you, you will just need to compare again the values for one data sample from Colab Notebook, the value, the output values that you get from the inference on that data sample in Colab Notebook. You want to compare them to the values you see on the serial monitor uh, when you copy and paste the data. All right, so cool, it does work. And now the next step is actually to make it from a simple test demonstration to a useful project. Um, so open the sketch that is called YITF Micro Weather uh, from Seed Arduino Sketchbook Repository and have a look at its content. I have divided the code into three separate parts. Uh, we have the main sketch, we have the get hist weather or get historical weather. Um, we also have a GUI part and we have the model here and we have some resources. Since our model requires the data for past 24 hours to make the first prediction, then we would need to wait 24 hours to get the first prediction, which is probably too much. To solve this problem, we get the weather for past 24 hours from openweathermap.org. So I have a relatively simple script here, which first connects to Wi-Fi, uh, and then it uh, gets the current weather data for your location. You will need to change a few values here. You will need to change the name of your Wi-Fi network. Uh, then you will need to change your API key, which you can get uh, by going to openweather.org and registering an account there. And you will need to change your location uh, in order for this sketch, for this example sketch to work. So once once a Y terminal connects to Wi-Fi, it is going to get uh, the latitude and longitude for your current location based on the city name. Uh, and then it's going to get the weather data for past 24 hours and then place it into input tensor and perform the first inference. And then every hour uh, it is going to replace uh, the the last value, the last value in the circular buffer that contains uh, the uh, temperature, humidity, and air pressure values is going to replace the last value with the new reading from this point of time. So it's basically going to shift 
uh, this buffer by one um, and perform the next inference. For GUI, I'm using LVGL framework, which stands for, uh, for Little and Versatile Graphics Library. It is also a rapidly developing project. Uh, it's not super easy to use, I have to admit, but the functionality is well worth time spent learning it. Follow the instructions in GitHub repository for this project to install the necessary libraries and configure LVGL to run this demo. All right, and finally, let's, uh, let's compile and upload. Actually, this is precisely where you will need to use the hourly build or hourly build of Arduino or 1.814 if you're using Windows, uh, because in this sketch, we do have a lot of libraries. All right, so it's compiled and then we see that uh, it's loading right now. We, uh, it's trying to connect to Wi-Fi. I'm actually quite far from Wi-Fi source. Let me, let me restart it. Okay, it's compiled now, connected to Wi-Fi, connected to server, and we got our first batch of, uh, of data from openweathermap.org. Here it is displayed on the terminal. And then we ran the first inference. It says that it is going to be sunny. Yay. Okay, sunny weather, but uh, there is a significant chance of rain, which is not unusual at all in Shenzhen, which has subtropical climate. All right, so now it's going to be waiting one hour till the, uh, till the next inference. First getting the data and then inference. We made it. We trained and deployed medium-sized convolutional neural network to wire terminal with all the blows and whistles and optimizations to allow device run stable for long periods of time and look sharp. Do try making this project yourself and possibly improving it. It's always a pleasure to see my videos and tutorials are helpful and inspiring for other people. Until the next time. Thank you.